So now we'll issue some bonds and pay interest at face value. So in order to, to sort of demonstrate how bonds work, I've invented my own bonds. And the basic, basic difference between these and most other bonds is that my bonds are two-year bonds. There's no such thing as a two-year bond. There's usually five, 10, 20, 30-year bonds because they're supposed to provide long-term financing. But we would not want to do the T accounts and journal entries for that length of time. So these are my favorite two-year bonds. They uh, have a face value of 100,000, which is a number I can work with, 10% uh, interest, which is much higher, but it also is a nice number to work with. Um, and the interest payments on this bond are June 30th and December 31st. So um, I'm just gonna take you through the whole life of this bond, and we'll just see what happens. So it, the bond is issued at face value on its interest date. And um, so that means it's interest uh, probably issued on January 1, you know. So uh, in order to figure out um, the journal entry, it's fairly simple. Uh, issued on its at face value, you've got cash of 100, and you're gonna pay back 100. Now, we have to pay the semi-annual interest. There are two interest payments a year. So we take the face value of the bond, we multiply it by the stated interest rate, which is that nice 10%, and so the annual interest on the bond would be $10,000. Now that's made in two payments, so there's two pay periods uh, each year with this bond. So each semi-annual interest payment is going to be $5,000. So we probably know enough to do the journal entry. So the, what the, uh, what this would look like for the journal entries for the interest over the life of the bond is on June 30th, you'd have interest expense and pay out the cash, uh, and the same over the life of the bond. This would be year one, that would be year two. Okay, so then what happens? Um, oh, if the payment dates happen to be uh, Jul Jul July 1 and January 1, uh, you still have to accrue the interest at year end. So you, the first two, the, the one one interest payment, wait a minute. Oh, this is, oh, this is where you get the cash. Okay, so this is issuing the bond. You've got the cash is 100 and the bonds payable are 100,000. Then you have your interest expense and cash on 7-1. But when you get to 1231, you have to accrue the interest even though it's going to be paid on the next day. The payment date is January 1. So here we would do interest expense and interest payable at the end of the year to get all the interest associated with this bond that year. And then on 1-1, one, one, you debit the interest payable and credit the cash. Okay, so um, that's basically how that would work. Now if you retire the bond at its maturity, this is when you're, the bond is up and you have to pay everybody back, uh, you, you would credit, debit the bonds payable and credit cash and uh, you know, that would take care of it. Okay, so what I've done is sort of uh, shown you the T accounts for how this bond would work. So at the outset you have a bond payable, that's the liability, you've got the cash, uh, here are the interest payments going out over the life of the bond, and then you have to repay the bond at the end of its life, and done. And then the other account involved is interest expense, and you can see the total interest on this bond would be 20000 Okay, so that's uh, the simplest situation of issuing a bond at its face value uh, on the interest payment dates. Okay, so now we'll move on to discount and premium.